What's going on everybody? Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another video for you. It's going to be a tutorial teaching you how to get the best streaming settings possible using OBS, Streamlabs OBS, and Stream Elements OBS. They're all based off the same initial engine, which is OBS, so these settings will work for all of these programs. I did a video in the past about the best settings for low-end PCs, so in this video, I'm gonna be explaining the best settings for low-end and high-end PCs. This is all gonna be using the latest update to OBS, which is the OBS version as of when this video is created. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to get the best NVIDIA encoder settings. If you wanna learn how to get the best X264 processor settings or the best AMD settings, those links will be in the description below. I've learned a lot over the past couple years of streaming and and so doing a ton of research and speaking to developers, these settings are gonna be exactly what the developers are suggesting. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so I have Stream Elements OBS loaded up right here. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you update OBS. You can do that by going to OBS's website or if you wanted to use Stream Elements like I am right here, you can use the download link in the description below. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is update your NVIDIA drivers. I've linked that website in the description below as well. You wanna make sure you have the latest ones because that'll always improve performance for games and for everything that uses your GPU. Once you have those fully updated, let's get started. Let's find your way to the settings button. This will look a little bit different for Streamlabs, but all these options will still be there. First thing we wanna do is go down to video and we're gonna see the four options. Base canvas, you always wanna match that with whatever your monitor is. So if you're on a 1080p monitor, then you wanna go ahead and change that to 1080p. And usually this also matches the resolution of the game you're playing. So try to line those two up and that's gonna make it look the best. Output scaled resolution. There is a time when you need to do this and a time you don't need to do this. If you're not affiliated or if you have a weaker PC, then you will want to scale this output resolution. I personally like scaling mine down to 720p because that helps viewers watch my stream more fluidly. But once you become affiliated or partnered, your channel will get transcoding and people will be able to downscale themselves while watching. So if you're affiliated or partnered, then you can keep this at 1080p. But we're gonna assume you're not right now and go ahead and keep it at 720p. Now, when you downscale, they have a downscale filter option that you could choose, four of them. And basically this is worst filter all the way to best filter. So if you have an older PC, maybe over a few years old, then you may wanna use these two and see how it looks. If you have a relatively newer PC, then you can go ahead and use these two ones right here. Common FPS value, if you click this, you have a few options, but we're gonna stick with common FPS values. And here, if you drop it down, the most common ones people use are 30, 48, and 60. If you're not affiliated or partnered or have a PC that's older than a few years old, it's recommended to use 30 or 48. That's gonna be less intensive on your computer and graphics card, and it's gonna make it easier for people to watch your stream if you're not affiliated. If you are affiliated, then you have transcoding, and you can go ahead and put that down to 60, and you'll be perfectly fine. So I'm gonna choose 60, once you're done with that, hit apply, and then we're gonna move over to the output menu. So scroll down in Streamlabs and you'll see that, but in Stream Elements, it'll be on the left over here. Make sure your output mode is under advanced and then click the streaming tab. We're gonna go all the way down to encoder, click that, and we're gonna see two options right here. We got NVIDIA NVENC H.264, and then the same name, but new. These are really, really close encoders that NVIDIA came out with but they came out with a new one, mainly for the RTXs. This works with the GTX line as well, but it works best with the RTX line. So I've used both of these. I have a GTX 1060 myself, and after using both of these, I found that the not new one works better for me. But if you have an RTX, then I would recommend trying the new one. Even if you have a GTX, you can try the new out. It may be different for you. You could have a 1080 Ti that's better than mine, and new would work best but I'll go over both options so everybody's base can be covered. We're gonna start with the new one with new in parentheses. We're gonna click that. You wanna make sure this box is checked in for streaming service encoder settings. This option will make sure your stream is most compatible with whatever you're streaming to, Twitch, Mixer, YouTube, whatever it is. Then we'll see rate control. Down here, we got CBR, CQP, VBR, and lossless. The only one you wanna use and that is the most compatible is CBR, constant bitrate. You can try VBR if you want, but Twitch, Mixer, and YouTube, and Restream, all of them recommend you use CBR. It's the most consistent. For bitrate, this number can change depending on two things. One, your internet upload speed and bandwidth. And two, your computer and graphics card and how old they are. The higher you choose this number, the more strain you're gonna put on your graphics card. The lower the number, the less strain, but that goes for the quality too. The lower the number, the worse the quality, the higher the number, the better the quality. So it's gonna have to be a sweet spot and that's different for everybody's rig. 
I have a GTX 1060 and I keep mine right at about 5,000. So that's a good base number to judge. So if you have a worse graphics card than me, try a little bit lower. If you have a better one than me, try a little bit higher. But here's another thing to remember. If you're not affiliated or partnered, the higher number you go with this, the harder it is for people to watch your stream because it may be producing too much information for them to download efficiently. So I recommend never going above six or 7,000 unless you are affiliated because if you are, your stream will get transcoding and people will be able to drop the quality and watch your stream better. Keyframe interval, this one by default is zero, but it's recommended you put it to number two. Mixer, Twitch, YouTube, all of them recommend your keyframe interval be at two. It provides the most consistent stream. Now we have preset. We have a few options down here, but the only ones you'll ever want to use are the first four. So these are pretty self-explanatory. Max quality means you have a really dang good RTX graphics card, and then you want to choose max quality. If you don't have the best, maybe you have like a 2060, then you can choose quality. If you have a GTX like me, then you could try quality or performance. But if you have a really old GTX, then I recommend performance or max performance. Basically, it's great graphics cards all the way to older graphics cards. So I'm going to go ahead and choose quality and then profile. You have three options, high, main and baseline. The only two people usually use are high and main and the best quality one is high. If you go down here to main or baseline, you're going to be reducing the quality of your profile and it's going to be very slight. You may not even notice it, but most people do use high and that provides the best results for me. Look ahead in psychovisual tuning. Go ahead and check these boxes. They both help improve the quality of your stream, but they also put a little bit more of a strain on your graphics card. So if you have these two options checked, make sure you don't see any errors where it says encoder overload. If you do, then you'll have to change some settings around. GPU, keep this one at zero. That means it's going to be using the very first GPU in line. Max B frames is basically a quality number. The only two numbers people usually use in here are two through four. You'll want to use two if you're going to be streaming some high frame rate stuff. But if you're streaming some low frame rate RTSs or something like that, then you can bump that down to four and you won't notice a quality difference. Once you're done with that, go ahead and hit apply and then you're good to go. So let's jump to the other encoder, the not new version, NVIDIA NVNC H.264. This is the one I personally use. Again, make sure this checkbox is checked like the other one. You'll see rescale output, but do not check that because if you are going to rescale, you're going to do that in the video tab. Rate control, we have our four options again right here, and we're going to want to choose CBR. Bitrate, again, I'm going to put that at about 5,000. Keyframe interval, put that at two, like we were talking about earlier. Preset, we see these same options right here, and the same thing applies. Great graphics cards down to older graphics cards. So I'm gonna put mine at quality. Profile, I always keep mine at high, but you can also choose main if you have a pretty old graphics card, high for better graphics cards. GPU, I only have one, so I'm gonna keep this number at zero. Max B frames, high FPS games, keep it at two. Low FPS games, put it to four. And once you're done with that, you're gonna see the only visual options between these two options are the psychovisual tuning and look ahead checkboxes. This older NVNC option does not have that, but everything else is identical. So again, play around with it. I have a GTX 1060 and these are the settings I use. So judge it from there, depending on your graphics card. Hit apply, start streaming, see what it looks like. If you get an encoder overload, change the preset down to performance or max performance. If your stream looks like it can be better and you're not overloading your encoder, up the bitrate and see what it looks like. But again, these numbers you have to play with and test out yourself. There's no one specific setting that works perfectly for everybody. It's always different between everybody's rig. But once you've found your sweet spot, you're good to go. And there you have it. You now know how to get the best streaming settings possible. If you got any questions, be sure to shoot them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer every one I can, but it may take a long time to get to them because there are a lot of those questions. If this video helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there. That'll really help me out. Maybe consider supporting the channel. That link will be in the description as well. So thanks again for watching guys and I'll see y'all in the next video. And I want to give a shout out to all my supporters, especially my super scrappers, LMC, HPL Gamers, and Old Man Beta.